What's up, everybody? John Kettler here with Pro Play Games, sharing my top A League Cup experience with Trevenant Break in the Pokemon Trading Card game. I used it in an expanded League Cup in Cypress, Texas. That's right around the Houston, Texas area. So let's go ahead and get right to it. All right. So the first thing you'll probably notice is that my list doesn't have that many Pokemon in a grand total of 13. And the reason why is because we're focused primarily on getting Trevenant into play really, really quickly without too much outside of that. So there are two different ways to do that. If we're going second, we can use Phantom's Ascension attack. lets us evolve straight from the deck to a Trevenant. Or we can use Wally if we are going first, and that does pretty much the same thing. So lets us get past the normal evolution rules and lets us get straight into... Trevenant, which is the main focus of the deck. So the ability Force Curse is the name of the game here. We're trying to get that into play fast, get an item lock into play. And the reason why item lock is so good is because, especially in the expanded format, our opponents are going to be using a lot of items to set up. Items are key to several decks, including the very popular Night March deck, including other disruptive decks, such as Sableye Garbodor, as well as opposing Trevenant decks. I think getting an item lock into play in the current expanded metagame is really, really good, and it will be a very viable strategy going into the big Dallas Regional Championship coming up next month. So the attack isn't that great, but it is pretty good. Let's us deal 60 to the active and 20 to two benched Pokemon. But the main attack we'll usually be using offensively in this deck is Trevenant Breaks Silent Fear attack. So in addition to that 50 HP boost we get, Silent Fear lets us deal three damage counters to all of our opponent's Pokemon into play. Generally, that turns out to being a little bit better, not to mention a little more energy efficient as well. We're not running double colorless energy as our energy acceleration, but instead we are running four copies of Dimension Valley, which will reduce the cost of all of our psychic Pokemon's attacks by one. That's a big deal, and especially with Trevenant Break, we are dealing a lot of damage, a lot of spread damage for a very cheap amount. So other than that, there isn't too much outside the ordinary, if, in case you've ever seen a Trevenant Break list before. I would like to highlight the huge number of hammers that I'm running. I'm running four Crushing Hammer, potentially discard any energy on a flip, or you can use three Enhanced Hammers to get a guaranteed discard of a special energy in play. So the reason why we run so many hammers is because more often than not, we are going to be wanting to use our draw supporters in order to get set up. So we have those four copies of Sycamore to get us new hands. We have three copies of N to give us new hands after shuffling our old hands back into the deck. So running a huge count of hammers lets us use item cards. We can play as many of those as we want on a turn as opposed to supporters, which we can only use one of a turn. That means that our deck is flowing smoothly. We are constantly getting off what we need without disruption on our end, while at the same time achieving maximum disruption on our opponent's side of the board. So not only are we taking away their items, we're taking away their energy, and we're keeping them from being able to attack whatsoever. That is really good, especially in the expanded format, like I said. So in order to get set up, in order to accelerate our start early game. We run a single copy of Jirachi EX, and we only run it because of its stellar guidance ability. It lets us search our deck for a single supporter card, put it into our hand. And like we talked about earlier, Wally is a really big deal here because with Wally we are accelerating our starts, especially when we're going first. Now we run seven different ways to fetch Jirachi EX on the first turn. We run three level ball, which continues to stay useful because it gets us phantoms. And we also run four copies of Ultra Ball. Now, Ultra Ball, while it can be used for Jirachi or Phantom, is an overall helpful item card that lets us get anything that we need at any point in the game. However, sometimes we can't dump cards from our hand in order to get set up, which is why we are comfortable relying on Level Ball at times. Now, to balance that out, to balance out Jirachi EX, remember it's only a 90 HP Pokemon, making it a prime target, we also run a single copy of Tapu Lele GX. Tapu Lele GX does pretty much the same thing in this deck as Jirachi EX. The only difference is it's a flat out better card. So Wonder Tag's the same ability as Stellar Guidance. The only difference is 
we have twice as much HP, almost, with 170 versus 90. And we have an actual offensive attack and the GX attack that we can use. So it's a lot more versatile. It's a lot more useful other than the main purpose of getting a single supporter card. But I'd say it's really good. I think it's a good split. And it's tough to say. I think that if I were going to make any single change to the list the way that it is right now, I would add a single copy of Espeon EX because the deck that I lost to in the top eight was a Zoroark GX deck. Now, in case you don't know what Zoroark is or what it does, for the purposes of this, it's a dark type Pokemon. And unfortunately for us, we've got low HP and we are dark type. But there's a way around that. With Espeon EX from Breakpoint, we can devolve all of our opponent's Pokemon in play. Zoroark GX is an evolution Pokemon. And better yet, it's pre-evolution Pokemon Zerua. Has 60 or even 50 HP. So all it takes are a few tree slams, or more likely, just two Silent Fears and Miraculous Shine on Espeon EX. And we could potentially win the game outright. That's a big deal. I think it can be... A really helpful inclusion, but overall, I like the way that this Trevenant Break list is built. I would highly recommend it for any League Cup you go to. Again, with maybe minimal changes depending on your metagame. For my metagame, I decided instead of running Maximum Enhanced Hammer to run a single copy of Team Flare Grunt and a single copy of Zerosic. I figured those cards would help me out against a Seismitoad EX matchup, and I was right, because Seismitoad EX, unlike Trevenant, locks your opponent's item cards with an attack. So the only way to get around that is if they get their item lock out against me first versus my item lock, I need some sort of supporter-based way to get around that or an attack-based way. And so in order to do that, I use a single copy of Team Flare Ground and Zerosic. I think that was really versatile. I would probably bring that to regionals if I were using this deck list. One thing that really didn't factor in too much, but could be helpful, is a single copy of AZ. I hated starting with anything other than Phantom, and so the theory behind AZ was being able to grab any Pokemon that I had in play other than a Trevenant so that it was no longer a target for our opponents, Lysanders and Guzmas. Lysander and Guzma, as you may know, lets you grab one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and bring it out to the active. Unfortunately, that's those are supporter cards, so Trevenant isn't doing anything to stop that. Well, other than that, I'd say that I really liked the list. I had fun using it. It was really easy to use, to be perfectly honest. I didn't feel like I had too much trouble when it came to micro decisions or very incredibly tough, difficult options to make. Generally, the deck was relatively autopilot, although I would say that probably some of the more difficult things to do involved timing. So timing things such as whether or not you wanted to use a certain hammer at a certain point or whether you wanted to save it later. I think those are skills that you'll probably develop as you test the deck and get comfortable with it. But all in all, I'd say it's a pretty good deck. I think anybody could pick it up. Several people could do quite well with it at the Dallas, Texas uh, Regional Championship next month. And again, this is a deck that I think is good. I think it'll stay good, and it's one of my top contenders for that tournament. So. Thanks a lot for watching and good luck.